so I've seen the film a couple of times now. I've seen it um, on a small screen and I've seen it on a big screen with a, with, with a big loud sound system. And the first thing I should say is this is a film that you need to see in the cinema. Don't wait for it to come onto streaming services or, you know, seek out a cinema to see it because it needs to be, it's an experiential movie. Because also the ratio, as you said, is small. It's small. It's going to look very small on your television. <laughs> exactly. Um, I was reading about the, the origin of it and uh, Robert Eggers saying that his brother Max had been attempting to work on an update of this unfinished fragment by Edgar Allan Poe called The Lighthouse, which is a really weird thing. I mean, it's only, you, you can read it in like five minutes. It's a fragmentary story that is a series of diary entries of somebody, you know, isolated in Lighthouse, begins January the 1st, 1796, and it gets as far as January the 4th and the manuscript ends. And there is, it's unfinished. There is also a theory that actually maybe it is finished. Maybe the finished is January the 4th and then nothing else. And the last line written on it is the basis on which this structure rests seems to me to be chalk. So it's a story about somebody isolated in this environment, which they think should be safe, but they can hear stuff going on and they're not quite sure why they can hear stuff going on, but they get the sense that the thing they're in is built on unsafe land. And it's, so there is a cult, whole kind of, you know, house falling down sense this kind of impending doom this sense of isolation and although the 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 story of the lighthouse as we have it now which is robert and max eggers uh, scripted it together um the poe is long gone but that sense of dread because when i said to you did you know that in the in the distant past you said well that actually of course it absolutely makes sense so it's mutated into something else, but it does still have that atmosphere. And when you said to Willem Dafoe, you know, it's been perhaps missold as a horror film, which incidentally I think was the same of The Witch. People were told that The Witch was a big scary movie, and I think The Witch is really disturbing, really disturbing. But I think some people went to see it expecting quite, quite bang scares, which is a kind of completely different thing. So uh, Robert Pattinson is Ephraim Wilson, who arrives at this lighthouse where Willem Dafoe's Thomas tends the lighthouse and he's a it's a barren rainy place where they promptly get isolated and we what happens very early on is that Robert Pattinson discovers this like a like a little carved um mannequin of a mermaid in his mattress and he sees uh Thomas up by the lighthouse, taking off his clothes, somehow kind of staring at the light. And we're told, you know, you can't wait, okay, so you can't go up there. I tend the light. You do all the menial jobs. We heard some of that in the in the clip that you played. And the thing starts to develop into a kind of a slightly sort of tentacular, hypnotic, because as I said, they run out of supplies, they start drinking. As they start drinking, everything about all the kind of paranoid underbelly of the story starts to, you know, get worse and worse. And there is a sort of a, a sense of their identities become confused. At one point, um, Willem Dafoe's character says, how long have we been here? Four weeks or two days? Like they've lost all sense of time. Meanwhile, they are beset by seagulls who may or may not embody spirits of, you know, of ancient myth. There's one thing about it's bad luck to kill a seagull, which kind of invokes, you know, ancient mariner and, you know, the albatross and all that sort of stuff. And as you quite rightly said, there is a sense that none of this is going to end well. There oh, is I a sense. I think you know that from, <laughs> from the beginning. It's not going to be a happy ending. So the first thing to say is that, I mean, I really, really liked it. Um, Jan Blaschka's cinematography is extraordinary and has been nominated for awards, and quite rightly so. Shot in this, ex you know, this really, really tight fashion. The Witch was one six six, which is a kind of older ratio, which is taller because you know, taller rather than it is wider, because so much of the Witch was taking place against the background of trees, and this has really got that claustrophobic enclosed feeling and I do think the cinematography is quite astonishing and of course it, you know it is it is shot on film when I watched it the first time I said you know the interesting thing is this is like a companion piece to bait the Mark Jenkin film well I just discovered today that they're doing a double bill at the uh, NFT I think it is on Monday the BFI South Bank in London in which they are going to show the lighthouse and bait and I believe that Mark Jenkin who made bait is going to introduce the lighthouse because weirdly enough the films are tonally similar and when you look at what it is that Robert Eggers is is kind of achieving with his with with his you know visual sense that is something very close to that driven sense of a specific vision that um that Mark Jenkin has there are also in the background as I mentioned the Poe thing you know you might see similarities to the story of I reviewed a film last year called The Vanishing, which was also known as Keepers, not that vanishing. It was known as Keepers, which is a film which is based on the Flannan Isles 
lighthouse disappearance of 1900 in which a bunch of guys went out to a lighthouse and all disappeared. And it's one of those kind of great mysteries, what happened to them? And the general feeling is either some storm knocked them all over the, or they all went crazy because people in isolated, you know, enclosed experiences, in enclosed environments, that will happen. There is also a kind of strange touch of, I know this sounds like a crazy comparison, but things like sunshine and event horizon, that sense of, you know, this being drawn towards a dark light, being absolutely mesmeric. Remember the thing in Sunshine about as they get closer and closer to the sun, it develops a kind of almost mm -hmm. like <clears throat> godlike do, persona. Yes. All that is going on in the background. But the thing that really makes it work is, also, it also reminded me at times, although again, it's a very, very different story of a field in England, which had that same sense. If you think of the tent walk scene from a field in England, and if you say to somebody, what exactly is happening in that scene? They'll say, I don't know, but I find it really, really disturbing. Can you say what? What's well, there's in a that scene, scene? In, in, the, in a field in England in which these kind of, these travellers have basically fallen under the spell of Michael Smiley's character. And Reese Shearsmith goes into a tent where something really demonic is happening, but you don't know what. And then he comes out of the tent in slow motion, attached to a rope. And it's just a shot of him walking out of the tent with his smile on his face, which is like the, the smile of the possessed. And it's a slow motion. All it is is him walking out of a tent on the end road. And it's one of the most frightening things I've ever seen. And there are individual moments in the lighthouse in which you get that same sense of, I don't quite know why this is so disturbing. I don't know, quite know why this is so oppressive. I think there are a number of reasons. Firstly, I think the performances are great. You do get the impression that those two characters have been, you know, stuck together in a very confined, you know, uh, space for what seems like a very long time. Although, as he says, how long have we been here? I don't know. And they've lost sense of time. And I always find that a particularly creepy idea, that idea that you, you no longer know how long you've been somewhere. You know, have you been there weeks? Have you been there days? Have you been there hours? Who knows? Plus, there's the thing about the disintegration of identity, which is one of the things that the film is about, because there is this kind of weird thing going on about transference of who did what. And they start having conversations in which they appear to be talking as each other. And then there are these strange kind of moments in which as the drunkenness, as the madness, as the debauchery takes over, the film itself sort of slips into these almost dreamlike states. So it's one of the, it's one of those weird things in which it's a film in which nothing happens a lot and the nothing is really is really disturbing and really profoundly affecting. And if you said What's it a story of? Which you virtually did. You said to Willem Dafoe, tell us the story. And he said, well, it's a story of two blokes trapped in a lighthouse. And it is. But it's so much more than that. It is, it's a, you know, it's a story about, about transference, about paranoia, about brooding horror, about personal disintegration. This throbbing soundtrack and, the, you know, the Mark Corbin throbbing uh, score, which again actually reminded me of the of the analog synth work that's going on in the background of Bait. And and I, a great performance by Robert Pattinson, who hasn't done a bad performance in living memory now, except for perhaps the French king in um, in whatever that was called, in The King. In The King, yes. He, ah. Yes, <laughs> it was a little bit overly French. <laughs> it was, yes. I shall taunt you a second time. And uh, Willem Dafoe with a beard that was so convincing that it can only have been his that cannot be a prop beard, right? He must have just allowed himself to turn into the wild man of Borneo with that beard. It's a, it's, it is really something. I'll be honest, I'm not entirely sure I know what, but that's what mm. I like about it. And in the same way as when I came out of, I came out of the witch, and I felt really profoundly shaken, and I saw the witch twice. And I, same thing. I just recently went to see the lighthouse again to see it projected, to see it with a, you know, and it's. It's really something. Yes. It, I, it's my question to you. I, I, it's not a question, it's a statement. Okay. I think it is possible to admire a movie and to enjoy the performances that you're watching yeah. and think that the final piece of work is astonishing. And I couldn't wait for it to finish. 
which I, th- I mean that as a compliment. No, I know you do. I know. I was desperate to get off the island. Yeah. As they were. Yeah. But I was more desperate <laughs> and I didn't have diesel fuel to drink. <laughs> Um, Can I just ask you? I'm not going to say this. Yes. Because the because the live stream is off. What about? Someone hasn't pressed the right button. No, I know. But um, what about the moment? Yes. Didn't that just? Hasn't that just really stayed in your mind? Oh, apparently it's back. Oh, fine. Well then, we, what about that moment? What an astonishing! What an astonishing moment piece, that was for people to just join us to see you acting out that. And what about that tableau vivant? What about that? Yeah. That, 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 yes. That, that bit. <laughs> But you know the bit I mean? Yes. Yes. But I don't want to think about it. No, you don't want to think about me reenacting it.